The most wonderful time of the year can also mean the busiest period for freight forwarders as shipping demands increase. What can we expect for the Burr months during the pandemic in terms of the delivery services? We now have an exchange with the founder of Los Angeles-based firm Manila forwarder Manny Pais. Manny, thank you so much for joining us. Happy Burr months to you. And this early, are Filipino Americans already planning to send their balik buying boxes to their loved ones back here in the Philippines? That's true. They really have to do it fast and early this time because of what's going on around the world. Mm. As uh, some people would think that the COVID pandemic is gone, but it's not. And then the after effect of that COVID pandemic, wherein the whole economy of the world stopped for a while, for two years, more than two years. So there's really a lot of things to, to catch up. What is the volume like, uh, Manny, when the Burr months begin? Um, does it expand by double or triple uh, compared to the previous months? Actually, it's more than triple because uh, mm. with the data that we have, the average person here in the U.S. sends three times a year, sends their balik bayan boxes three times a year. One is, of course, before Christmas. The other one is before the school season starts. Mm -hmm. And the other one is just for birthday or something special for their family. So when it comes to Christmas time, the volume of senders actually uh, triples or quadruples, depending on you know uh, the capability of everyone. Because you no, know, a lot of people still are not making enough money these days. You know, well, I was about I, I was about to ask you that as a follow up question, uh, Manny, because uh, our U.S. Kababayans also face many challenges. Not only is there COVID, as you mentioned, but goods are more expensive now. Um, higher inflation, rising fuel prices. Um, this could also dampen the holiday spirit of sending those balik bayan boxes uh, back here uh, to their families and relatives. Yeah, you're correct, Rico. However, you know, this spirit of giving, it doesn't have to be so materialistic. You know, sometimes just the thought that you thought about your relatives overseas, do some, you know, get some something simple, something like a token. Sometimes mm. you could even do your own gifts, you know, like that's what my, my wife does during the pandemic. She makes her own Christmas gift. And it meant a lot to the people who are receiving them. So it's not really money, you know. Uh, absolutely, because uh, every balik bayan box, whether big or small, has many things in it. It could be a, a personal uh, gift, which is handmade by you. Uh, it could be shoes, clothes, toys, and, and dried food. So every balik bayan box, whether big, small, or medium-sized, means a lot to the families here back home. Totally, totally. And that's what the spirit of Christmas, you know, it's not really about money, about how expensive the gifts are. And that should not stop people from remembering or giving some gifts to their loved ones in the, in the Philippines. You just look around your closet sometimes, you know, you'll be surprised you order something on Amazon that you haven't used for three years, five years, ten years. You know, <laughs> the people in the Philippines would appreciate those, you know. Absolutely. Uh, stocked up uh, goods will really be appreciated uh, by our friends here in the country. And, and Filipinos anywhere in the world, uh, Manny, still send home stuff, uh, spur of the moment, last minute, as they say. Uh, what is the latest time uh, of the Burr months should they be sending their Balikbayan boxes, if it's by sea, to reach in time for Christmas? Actually, it's a good thing that you're able to uh, have me on your show today because a lot of people, some people actually haven't realized that the world has changed, you know, that there's a lot of delays in shipping, a lot of delays in customs clearing, a lot of delays. Even here in the U.S., there are times that you could not even get a container availability. And now, what's going on with the international trade? They're cutting down the routes going to the Philippines because the Philippines has few exports. So when the vessel goes to the Philippines from the transshipment points, either in Kaohsiung, Hong Kong, or Taiwan, on the way back, there's nothing to bring out. So it's important that uh, uh, we understand that. And another thing that we're doing is we're doing a project among young people in the Philippines to encourage them to do exports. 
Mm. You know, small they could start small and we have a group of companies here in the in the US that is willing to mentor them to develop the export of the Philippine uh, government. That is a great idea. Um, as a final question, what are the trends uh, are you seeing right now among our Filipino-American kababayans there, especially the baby boomers? They're not only sending their balikbayan boxes, but they're sending their things home and coming home? <laughs> yeah, they're coming back. You know, their, their pension here in the U.S. is multiplied 54 times or I don't know, it could be higher. I don't know. 56 but times then, now. One U.S. That, dollars, 56 pesos. <laughs> yeah, so, so if you're... Your pension is, uh, would go a long way in the Philippines. Thank you so much, Manny, for this Christmas shipping exchange. Manila Forwarder founder, based in Los Angeles, Manny Paez. And